Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, hello. In this video, I am clearly as you read by the title, I'm going to be establishing and talking about by facts and first half of the video is going to be facts, side of it, and the other half is going to be the emotional touches of it. For this video, I'm going to be establishing and talking about the Auschwitz survivors. Auschwitz. The Nazi death camp where more than a million people, mainly Jews, were murdered. If you don't know what Auschwitz is, which to my surprise, my sister and, well it doesn't really surprise me, looking back now it doesn't really surprise me that my sister was relatively uneducated on this because she didn't exactly see through school all the way but as soon as I asked my mum on this, not as a not educating myself through her, but I was doing a whole bunch of research and just writing down little clip notes and she was wondering what I was doing and I said I'm just brushing up on the history of Auschwitz and she asked me what's Auschwitz? The fact that she didn't even know education throughout the world is so undermined like there is next to nobody knowing about this literally the only YouTuber I am making quotations with my hand but as usual not in frame I stumbled upon a young woman's YouTube channel. I love to travel. Usually it's for work or to, to attend a fitness expo, but this is something um, for me. Talking about this exact subject, and she was talking about it, there was Auschwitz, which is where they were all brought to in the beginning, unfortunately, obviously. What's his name? Not just Hitler, but somebody else. Rudolf Himmler, he had instructed, I'm pretty sure, um, obviously, Hitler was the biggest bad man there. Anyone else by um, in command and going to be mentioned, probably more like the council side of it, the commanding office, commanding officers, etc. Like that. After the first o Auschwitz, after the first Auschwitz uh, building slash camp was established, one next door, which became Auschwitz. Birkenau was then made and it was a much much bigger camp because they had more people coming in. The bigger and the more camps that they could make, the more people they could fit in, the bigger their slavery camp would be, which was just so unfortunate. Unfortunately for everyone in the world, only a few selected countries in the Europe area didn't branch out too far to like America or Africa or Australia, thank heavens. Specific countries around the times of obviously Germany were at war with Poland. Well, mostly Hitler was at war with them. He had too much ego. He's a complete corrupted pig. Whatever other thousands of excuses he had up his pants. According to my sister, this is the one thing she knew about him. Is um, with the war itself, he just went in blind. He he would happily throw everyone under the bus, so to speak. And as long as he remained untouched, he didn't care how much he lost. As long as he couldn't be killed himself. It's just slight exaggeration, of course, but. At the same time, I'm very, very serene. He would happily throw everyone under the bus and he went in blind with this war. He just got all of his soldiers, all of his men, etc. to a little bit further down from Auschwitz itself. I don't know every single country um, or state um, in the German region off my heart. We'll occasionally add little subtitles on the screen just to catch you guys up. I didn't do quite a few hours of research, but literal hours of re research now I actually know how Brookhouse and Haley Reese feel when they do hours of research. Hitler was a complete a complete ego trip, but he was also at odds with himself and war with the rest. Bit of a butcher baby's reference there. With whoever was in charge of the Poland um, army community, etc. I don't know who he or she was on that part. I'm sure there is a name somewhere um, for whoever, whomever, for whomever he was at war with. He let his own demise cost the lives of not only his men and women but also thousands and thousands, up to millions, between Germany and Jews and Poland, of people down to their deaths. Luckily, there were survivors, and as I was saying, there's literally only one YouTuber that I have seen that's just a genuine YouTuber, a young woman, blonde, probably around my age, maybe a bit older, maybe a bit younger. She visited Auschwitz and her video is literally the only video that I have seen. A genuine YouTuber, every single other video is obviously documentaries, whether it's just, you know, a random person in the uh, court crowd 
recording the uh, trials for specific documentaries towards those men and women who are now all elderly. I've survived this, well, not this, because it was 30 to 50 years ago. Um, like I said, they're all elderly now. They've all got their own kids, the kids have kids. Ever since those documentaries to TV and what have you, and then of course onto YouTube, these elderly people obviously have probably more than likely passed away. Have passed away at a peaceful rate prior to finally being able to peacefully leave the world at their own pace. They were all living such beautiful, peaceful lives. I mean, the country's had their own problems as is, you know, relatively abusive parents. One didn't argue with one's father. Romania was, of course, stories of abusive teachers, you know, little things like that, but nothing Nothing war induced, nothing that was conflicted by that. About the 1930s or so, they were all just living happily, you know, to the best they could, nothing war related. Families were living a swell life, you know, the parents were going off to work, the mothers did their type of work. I mean, I don't think women could specifically work back then, so just the genuine house chores and sorting out the husband's laundry and cleaning up after the kids, what have you, while the kids went off to school. Right around 1940s, unfortunately, but about 1940s, 1941 was of course when German, Germany, German? German is a language, or Deutsch, which is the German word for German. The German soldiers had invaded onto Poland. Everyone was just you know, minding their own business, whether it was a weekday after school or after working hours and or if it was a weekend, no one really works on a weekend. The German soldiers had invaded upon Poland and one particular lady, I will of course occasionally reference each interview so that these survivors are still technically speaking from their own perspective because I cannot tell someone else, I cannot retell someone else's story. That's not my place, I can only say what's memorably at the top of my head. I do have clip notes here, literally pages full. And now and again, I will just remind myself of what to talk about next by these notes. So in a way, this video is a little bit scripted, but it's just to help keep me on track and talking about something so serious. But I will, I will relist on the screen as well what I am specifically reading directly from the internet. So 1941 or 1940, 41. Germany soldiers, German soldiers had invaded upon Poland and. One lady I will reference, top of my memory, she was saying she was minding her own business in her home. Pretty sure next to all of her family was home. She had noticed, she was saying that they could hear a lot of racket happening and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't like a marching band type thing. It was a lot more creepy, it was so much more scary. You could just already feel the ba bad vibes coming from the, all these noises. We went to the basement, my cat was outside and my brother went out to let the cat in, the cat was meowing and he came back with a hole in his trouser and he said there was shooting from the rooftops. Once they had acknowledged that these um, sounds out in the streets, like the, the oncoming chaos, just out of the blue, for them anyway, they all had to jump down into their Basement Sala or whatever it's called. This particular lady, which was just a teenager, I think she said that she was around 15, maybe younger, maybe older. The cat had been left outside and her older brother, older, younger, there was definitely a mention of an older brother. He went outside to go let the cat in. When he came back, he had a hole in his trousers. It was shot. Maybe it was a non-lethal flesh wound, especially if they managed to make it back to the um, cellar. I think that's what I was supposed to say, not cellar, cellar. Managed to make it back and you know, reported that, um, you know, soldiers had invaded. Somehow or another, Isla also really wanted to see her garden again. I think at this point though, they were in the cellar for a little bit too long, like I had to start making it their home. They wanted to see out the window to her very special garden. Prior to this, somehow she, um, it, it was by the report, or she has seen for herself that these soldiers... Um... Then there were people in different uniforms. You know, our army, the Polish army, had sort of uh, beige khaki uniforms, and those uniforms were green. She 
she was saying that the Poland soldiers had a beige khaki uniform. This particular man did not and they were of course preaching and boasting about Adolf Hitler. And, you know, praise Hitler, blah blah blah. Other chants in German. They have started taking into acknowledgement that their home was no longer their home. People were shouting, you know, Heil Hitler, long live the Führer and, 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 and people were waving flags with swastikas. There was a feeling of complete betrayal. Suddenly, suddenly you were home and, and you were not home anymore. The homes were invaded by these soldiers. They invaded into specific homes, beginning to take people, sorry for the bug, beginning to take people from their home and start to round them up. Some people managed to stay in the cellar for a lot longer, especially this family and his family. <sighs> sorry for the train. No, apologising for the train and it goes past. <laughs> yeah, at some point, this young girl's family were discovered in their bunker and finally rounded up, obviously, unfortunate for them. They were all placed onto cattle carts to begin with. Pretty sure right about this point, she um had almost attempted to jump back off because kids, they don't really want to stay on a car. They don't feel safe on anything. They will leap off. My mother came up to him and he looked at me and he says, how old? I said 18, and he sort of pushed me to one side and my mother to the other side. I, I wasn't aware what was happening at that particular point, but shortly thereafter, when I stood with my other friends who were also separated from their mothers, we realized that we were going to go to separate places. And there was enclosures, an enclosure there with barbed wire to, to the right where our mothers were, and we were immediately taken to to the left. Now again, I, I don't remember the time sequence at all. I just remember a tremendous panic and uh, and shortly thereafter some trucks arrived, uh, open trucks with, with sort of a gate behind it and we were loaded on the truck and uh, I heard my mother's voice from my father ask, where to? And I shouted back, I don't know. And I guess I must have been aware that, that I was taken away from my mother so I jumped off. And Marin came, and he was a very slight, small man. We didn't expect such strength in him. And he picked me up bodily, and he threw me on the truck, and he says, you are too young to die. It won't really take being drafted or deported, deployed, sorry, deployed. They won't really take it too seriously. Adults know what's happening, but they don't want to freak the kids out, because the kids will make twice as much of a fuss. So she had leapt off. Virtually a man placed her back up onto the vehicle, and said you were too young to die. It wasn't just you know, Poland that was swept up in the madness of everything. Other countries were dragged into it as well, but I will get into that a lot later. Well, upon the first few rounds of prisoners slash prisoners of war, victims, etc., they were they finally had arrived by a cattle cart to begin with, and by train. But then they landed not landed, but they arrived in the destination of Auschwitz to begin with. So maybe like just a bit before Auschwitz, the other town is before that. They didn't arrive directly at Auschwitz camp, concentration camp. To begin with they landed, I keep saying landed, they, not like they took a plane. They had arrived in a town camp just before Auschwitz and to be not only just separated, I mean if there were little kids to infants, they got to go with the elderly. However, the elderly, they didn't have the best of luck to begin with because they're already old, they're already worn down by old age. The weather there that was going to continuously change. Some people really thought that were, the war was only going to last six months because wars don't last that long. The bigger the ego, apparently, though, the longer a war lasts, especially if nobody is paying too close of attention and not taking action soon enough. Plus, the more manpower that a particular army has. Women were of course separated from men. If two people were seen holding hands, soldiers immediately separated them, they intentionally separated them, then told them to, you know, women go this way, men go this way, kids go with summer people, elderly, you may as well say your prayers, or don't. Not that I'm embracing my, you know, German arrogant soldier here, of course, but unfortunately for some, giving the amount of rounds one particular soldier would be standing at a certain point and they would take one look at the person and they were a young child, like teenage years, 15 to 18. They had a disability, like a physical disability, but they have a prosthetic limb or there was just 
back, arthritic problems, etc. Something that physically slows them down. They would unfortunately be sent straight to a gas chamber. Within the year of 1941, so a year after the war had just started breaking out, substance normally used for pest control, which is known as Zilkin B. I don't quite know what it specifically is, but it is introduced into gas and whatever the effects were, like I said, it's for pest control technically. They used this chemical within disguised showers. In the end, they used it for in disguise of showers, but prior to that, when they were just verifying and testing it, testing and verifying it, they then decided at the Auschwitz Center, that was um, built and established, then decided to make this work and actually put it into one of the concentration camps within the pretty sure first camp. So once, unfortunately for all the people, once they had arrived there and they looked good straight away, they were sent left for work, right for their death, but they had no idea that they were awaiting their death. Again, if they were physically disabled or if they were already too old and you know they clearly could not have lasted much longer, type of too old. Little kids as well, like if they had any form of physical disability, they would be sent to the gas chambers as well, which sucked so much because they had a hell of a future before them. If you hit anyone who was older, like it did not matter with these. German soldiers and the orders that they had, someone physically could not tolerate the you know, the hypothetical labour that would be coming their way, they wouldn't even be considered, like they wouldn't even be given an easy to handle job. If someone is physically useless to you, they would get rid of you, but they didn't want to cause a instant uprising. They were saying you know, to everyone once they were separated into two groups, the crippled group so to speak, and the fit and healthy group, they would be, they would have to first have to ditch their belongings, like the briefcases and handbags, whatever they have with them, also to ditch their clothes, hop over into these showers where it would just be cleansed off, etc. But they were already pretentiously being relieved out of their misery, like the confusion of everything. Unfortunately, as soon as they were into the showers, they were not in for the shower, the warm water of their life. Unfortunately, they faced the gas chambers. I don't quite know what it did to them specifically, but obviously it killed them. These gas chambers were specifically able to consume consume about 6,000 lives all at once. These gas chambers were clearly huge. It would have been in like smaller groups, but the overall total, 6,000 deaths caused by gas chambers, which is just sickening. However, those who were sent left to face hard labour, forced hard labour obviously, had to still strip down. And once again, if you had anything wrong with your body by appearance, pimples or a scar, or just something that does not make you look sharp and clean and that type of body, if you did not look fit and clean and good enough, and once again, you will just be sent to either the gas chambers which they had or the consecration uh, pits which of course is where you'll probably be first shot in the head but then thrown into the fiery pits for body to burn. And anyone who stayed looking good um, were stripped down, um, they skipped the shower part, went straight on to having their all their hair shaved off, whether it was completely down to the scalp and bald all out, or it was you know, just a few patches of hair missing from a very dodgy haircut. The, it came to cut my hair. The German SS woman, as I look around and she looks and she looks, ah, uh -uh, stop, don't cut her hair. I was the only one that didn't have the hair shaved, just cut shorter. Some uh, women maybe possibly got to keep their hair length, but it just had to be somewhat shorter. Anyway, they did use um, the excess hair for using it as substance, like making a substance out of it. These people would then be dragged out, not by the soldiers, like they were practically prima donnas, they would not touch and get themselves dirty. Lazy little shits. We would get obviously the newfound slaves slash prisoners of war to grab these bodies and 
heaven forbid, I mean, it, the chances are too high that some of the prisoners had to grab a known family member or a friend because everyone was loose within a town of each other they would have recognised each other off the streets sometime but the high chance of family members and the medium low chances of friends and just genuine civilised citizens recognising the bodies the gas chambered bodies I don't know what someone would look like if they got gassed and killed that wealthy maybe just like burns to the skin and suffocation. These people, the living ones, the ones who were fit from the beginning to take on the heavy duty work would have already had to, not would have, they definitely had to take the corpses, you know, the cadavers, cadavers, whatever, however you want to pronounce that. The crematory pits or the fiery pits. I thought crematory was like a mausoleum. Crematory is fiery pit. It would have been an ugly sight, it would have been so uncomfortable to do anyway, but it would have been gut-wrenching, drag these bodies, knowing that you'll never see these people ever again. But once they had arrived in Auschwitz, the men, the women and the children, or you know, pre-teens, weren't quarantined exactly, they were just stripped down and giving specific uniforms, stripy top halves, skirts, wooden shoes and like an overlay of material on that. And for the slightly colder seasons and days, because even in you here, know, the genuine seasons that you think you're going to get a lot of warmth out of, you can still have your cold days, especially at night when the temperature drops. The women were lucky enough to receive headwear. The men, on the other hand, obviously just got a pair of pants and a shirt as well. In particular, young lady, she, as she was figuring out her assortment of clothes, the first outfit that she put on was too tight for her. She was slim and very fit, but it was just a bit too tight for her. The shoes that she was attempting to put on were also way too small. She couldn't get a whole foot in there. She already knew in her soul that without fitting these clothes on properly, she would never have survived. She would have been stuck with the cold and it would have just gotten to her by hypothermia. Luckily though for her, throughout her minutes of crying and, you know, so all break down. A man who actually happened to be a family friend worked with her dad. He called her over to the fence, which at this point the fence was barbed wire, an electric, an electrical barbed wire fence. Called her over to it. The man had her attention, called her over to the fence, told her to wait five minutes. When he came back, he threw a parcel over the fence. She caught the parcel, she looked in it, and the man had then taken off because obviously he needed to get back to work and or run back off in the direction he came. I had opened the parcel. She had discovered proper fitting shoes and quite nice clothes that she could probably wrap herself up in which made her so much happier and it gave her a much better start to her repetitive use of the same outfits. There was such a limited supply of food, not because the soldiers were unprepared in that matter. They were very prepared because they were very fed. It was the prisoners who weren't allowed so much food, which they want the prisoners to be in hard labour. The least they could have done was add more food to keep the machine running. Like, a machine won't go for long without fuel. It's common freaking logic. Same thing goes for people, obviously, we're not. Robots they don't function that way, but we do need the fuel to keep on going. The logic was, if these people work absolutely convincingly hard enough, they will earn a little bit of extra food. For the most part, for some of it, they were, their limits were tested, their humanity was obviously tested and generally stripped down. Women are more emotional than men, it's a fact, it's more of the universe. The women you know, more than enough of them probably cry their heart out. So. When it came to supper time, the prisoners were lucky enough to receive some food at all, which they very quickly had the mentality to eventually be very grateful for. They had to have a specific and individual unique utensil, a cup or a bowl, and maybe if you're lucky, a spoon. If you did not have one of these, you could not get food because the soup would have been too hot in your hand if they chose to heat it up in your hands and on you at all times because if you lose yours and you cannot find it it wouldn't be the case that someone else stole it for themselves but if you were the unlucky few who lost your dishes no one else would help you out because they've got their own hunger to look out for 
everybody was looking out for each other, which was very sweet, and that is humanity right there. But at the same time, you do have to completely look out for yourself. Once they have finally started to get settled down, and unfortunately, it's such an ugly word to use, settle down, but as these people were getting settled down into their camp, they very quickly had to start thinking like an animal. Survival strategy, like animal instinct. A a, well, they're the prey actually, so there is a hunter nearby. How the hell do they get away from this hunter? It's hard to thrive and survive in this new world that they are stuck in, this newfound stressful nightmare. Find yourself some clothes to make sure that you stay warm. If you can, bundle up with a few people, like buddy up. As for toilet privileges, these people, they had to have special permission to use the toilet and each person was keeping a sharp ear out for how many times this particular bucket was being used and you know, the urine slash feces dumped into who was the last one to use it and yeah, whoever that last person was to have used the toilet bucket had to be the one to empty it out and not go out the um Shared area and my cat's outside, that's why I jumped. You need a special permission to hop out of the shared area and uh, take a dump. And then, t if you're the last one to use the bucket and the bucket is full, you had to. I don't know if you can still go off by the first permission you got or if you had to re ask. But you then had to take the bucket and just dump it out forever and then bring it back and go back to bed. And probably like three seconds later, get back up again for the hard day's work all over again. How the hell is my battery rig down one bar? I'm not talking that much, am I? I had to, they, they were probably, probably pretty grateful to be relying on each other's body heat. Um, but unfortunately, someone did not make it through the icy cold. Obviously, hypothermia, they would have frozen to death. Once that, you know, on both receiving ends, once one side of the body heat stops, and you can start to feel your own body heat giving way on this side, you then have to start relying on the person on the other side of you. Another lady's perspective, she had been talking to a gypsy, I think, in a Roma, was saying to this young woman who was obviously a little girl back then that she will make it through this first night or she will make it out. She took my hand, she said, give me your hand. And she said, you know, you're going to come out. And by the next morning, that same woman who gave that peaceful message had passed away because of the cold. And she and her mum, because she was still with her mum, she had relocated her mum, which was amazing for her. She had said to her mum, no, this, unfortunately, this woman is dead. So they're going to need to take her clothes and everything that she has. They're, um... I don't remember what I was specifically last saying. I needed to switch my camera off just for a second. Some soldiers from Russia, because Russia was having to get roped into this mess. Some of them obviously were suffering from war injuries. Obviously the soldiers would not have been, you know, genuine people, obviously. So they needed to start reading off of the, well, not the survivors, but the prisoners back then. Some of them were also chowed down from lack of eating and the harsh weather, genuine labor of being physically exhausted. So all that piled on top of the blood loss from the blood drive and normally when you do give up blood no matter how fit and healthy you are you do need to drink and eat something or one or the other but these, some of these prisoners they weren't able to get food or water or any form of liquid and they would not have wanted to drink their own piss into their systems fast enough so the only thing that they could do was pass away because they didn't have anything to replenish their body and they already lost enough blood they were already chowed down by chowed down i just mean physically broken down so not only were people lucky enough to survive the fitness test and almost lucky enough to survive through the freezing cold nights and the already high ass labor prior to absolutely any of that they had their identities completely taken they say one person's name is well this is actually a legit name from a survivor. Do you pronounce it as Rini Salt? That could just be by her accent, she is Polish. Um, as I'm reading her name, I see it written or pronounced as Renee Salt. She would have had a number placed on her skin. And about <laughs> along here. Basically a identity sucking number placed onto the arm. They were no longer addressed as their name or funny nicknames. They go by number. Each following day, as more and more 
of the deposits started pouring in, essentially replacing the dead for those who didn't quite see it through to another, another day. During all this hard labour, early in the morning, like 4am onwards, I would have to obviously be up and ready, rushed out the door into the cold. You know, morning times it's freezing and obviously the evening times it's also freezing. Everyone would have to send an attention. If there was just one person missing, the whole group would have to stand there two hours, which is the usual amount of time, but some people, you know, the, the longer someone stayed missing, the longer multiple someone stayed missing, the longer that these prisoners would have to stand there and stand there and stand there until finally these people were found. And then these people could get back to work and or finally go to bed. Two hours was the smallest limit. It has also gone up to two, three hours, maybe four hours has definitely been the longest stretch. Some people have managed to stay standing for that long but without surprise some people just collapsed from exhaustion and or by that have passed away. But next to the hard labour of working it wasn't just the male soldiers that were pig-headed. Unfortunately some women were as well, like some of the women guards were absolutely brutal. And they, for the first time we saw the women assess and in a way they were, they were terribly cruel, they were, they were awful women. I don't know where they get women with, with such hatred in them, for what? Women can be bitchy, men aren't really the bitchy kind, like they, were, they can be douchebags, can beat you to the ground like if you're not digging into the ground fast enough which technically the more you work the warmer you do get but of course you do wear yourself out faster so, all right i'm just gonna wrap this up for here for now charge my battery up and then end just a little bit so now we'll probably see you guys in a couple of hours and it'll most likely be daylight by then see you then okay so it's been a couple of hours later like almost a full 24 hours later i managed to get started on some editing and then decided to re-edit because I was talking way too much. I was going to, you know, cut to the chase a little bit more. All the hell that they were enduring from the start, we had been separated by, uh, let me rephrase that a little bit, the Germans had invaded onto Poland and very, very slowly different cities of Poland were uh, deployed and deported, etc. Uh, to different, not all the way straight to Auschwitz, and Auschwitz broken out all straight away. But smaller little camps along the way. Once these poor people had unfortunately been separated by their families if they had something physically wrong with them. A few um, Polish men, I'm pretty sure, and definitely a few Jewish women have managed to smuggle some gunpowder. The men have managed to kill some of the guards, I think three guards, that they managed to use some of the gunpowder to blow up one of the gas chamber showers, or the showers were in disguise of course, but they managed to blow up at least one of them, was a step up. There were only three, maybe four Jewish women, and about the same amount of men involved. The men um, tried to make a break for it, because obviously, you know, explosions are not subtle. <laughs> they tried to make a break for it, but unfortunately, um, more guards, they just came racing around on their vehicles with guns. They had managed to smuggle some of the gunpowder from Monowitz and managed to shoot these men down, which sucked obviously. They were the ones that were hiding and didn't hurt too well or didn't hurt for long enough, found and executed on the spot. The women under their hands, unfortunately for them, including a young woman. So one of the women that were involved in the uprising, one of the Jewish women, I'm reading direct, this directly off a web page, Ella Gertner, the Jewish woman, she and three other women, I'm pretty sure it's the same nationality as she, managed to smuggle the gunpowder from Monowitz, effectively helped blow up one of the gas chamber showers. Pretty sure it was one of the showers, but they definitely managed to blow up one of the gas chambers, which was good, but unfortunately, like I just said before, the men uh, that were also involved didn't hide for long enough or well enough and they were found and executed. Women were eventually also found, or either that or they handed themselves over and just surrendered. Whatever the case was, there was a public hanging and those women, Ayla Gertner was one of the women, one of the women who unfortunately received the hanging. So unfortunately for absolutely everyone, 
for those who were late to the war, so to speak, and those for those who were early to the war or just midway through it, so no matter what labour they were assigned to or whether or not they were sent straight to the gas chambers or the crematory, both fire pits and the oven, not the kind that you put pizza in, unfortunately. This war was initially starting off from 1941 to 1942, so the first two years of, upon invasion and the hell. This war went on for three more years and it did not end until 1945. So many people, not just from the physical bloodshed of murders, like the executions, or if there was a bit of a rebellion, there were more executions, but the death throughout the um, natural elements, like the cold, the hunger, the general starvation, exhaustion, etc., that are equal to filling in the blank spaces for the massacres. I have I written on a specific list right here on a page that I got from the internet. The trains that had arrived with the following deported were, and this was literally a total of all, not all the countries that still exist to this day, but a list of the invaded countries. Hungary, 426,000. Poland, 300,000. France, 69,000. Greece, 55,000. Netherlands, 60,000. Bohemia, Moravia, I am apologising if I am butchering some of these words, 46,000, Slovakia, 27,000, Belgium, 25,000, Yugoslavia, 10,000, Italy, 7,500, literally the smallest population was Norway, 690, other including other concentration camps, 34,000. Hitler managed to, and his squad, managed to deport and invade other way around. All of those people, all those countries, all across Europe, all those countries and put them through slavery. If they were physically handicapped, that's the word I was looking for. If they were handicapped, they could not go on with the labour. It was already their time. They already had a death sentence prior to the invasion. And like I kept saying, if you did not have a, if you physically looked like you could not go on, they wouldn't bother with you. They wouldn't bother letting you live any further. If you were fit and healthy and looked good from the start anyway, they will let you live. Except if you... They were killing you by you killing yourself as far as the starvation from the weather and the genuine exhaustion from the hard labour. Only times where they did spill blood, technically, is of course the executions. Finally, around 1945, the very, very ending of the war, or near enough, these German soldiers freaked out a tad and they started to notice that, especially around the camp of Bergen-Belsen, it was basically a living dead camp. A very, very small town, a little bit further up from Auschwitz. I wish that was on the way through the death march. This death march, like I said, was starting to say, these soldiers had noticed that there was a bit of a visitor coming along. People off in a distance, known as a Red Army. I'm pretty sure that there were some more Russian soldiers. They didn't want to stick around to greet them or, you know, one up them. The first thing they did, they didn't really know what their number count was. They weren't going to risk it. So they decided to round up all their prisoners, put them on a death march. And with that came more death. Obviously, you know, you're getting exhausted from walking in general. No matter where you're walking to, when you're walking endlessly, you're already dying of a few other things. There's typhus, I think it's called. I've heard it so many times now, I should get the pronunciation right this time. A common disease carried through dust that makes people sick, obviously. With the Red Army approaching, German soldiers panicked, rounded up all of their prisoners, for the ones who were still alive, if you can call it alive. And then they marched over... They marched out 58,000 prisoners. Obviously the numbers just dropped and dropped and dropped as they were walking in closer and closer to Bergen-Belsen. Again, I'm probably mispronouncing some of these names. I am sorry. So by 1945, the year of the 27th of January, I'm actively reading the list so I can make sure I get the facts right. The Red Army found, it's just the way I was written on the website, 7,650. I don't know if that was supposed to say 7,650. The website must have left out a comma, correct grammar. 7,650 exhausted starving prisoners and a number of pieces of evidence of crimes Nazis had not had time to destroy. In the camp they found 8 tons of human hair and over a million men's suits and women clothes, women's dresses, sorry. Various estimates 
1.2 million to 1.6 million people lost their lives in Auschwitz, becoming a symbol of the Nazis' final solution to the Jewish question, Hitler's solution to reducing the Jew population. Technically, what were they doing wrong to Hitler? What were they saying or doing to piss him off? One of the things that I stumbled upon on a website was the purpose behind these camps. Like most German concentration camps, Auschwitz, the first one, so the very, very first Auschwitz, that was the first established, constructed for three purposes. Incarcerate real and perceived enemies of the Nazi regime and German occupation authorities in Poland for an indefinite period of time. To provide a supply of forced laborers for deployment in SS-owned construction-related enterprises and later, armaments and other war-related production, to serve as a site to kill small targeted groups of the population whose death was determined by the SS and police authorities to be essential to the security of Nazi Germany. Technically, I don't understand what I just said, but just read that straight off, wrote that straight off of a website for the technical reasons of why they built these camps in the first place. So the total unfortunate deaths of the final count of each culture and once again, reading this directly off the page slash website, but I wrote it down. Total deaths concluded. Jews, 1,095,000 to 960,000 died. The Jews, it was 1,095,000 with deported, 960,000 died. Non-Jews, 140,000 to 150,000 deported, 74,000 died. Roma or Gypsies, 23,000 deported, 21,000 died. Soviet prisoners of war, 15,000 deported and died. Other nationalities, Russian, Hungarian, 25,000 deported, 10,000 to 15,000 died. Auschwitz Birkenau had the highest death rates, but also at the same time had the highest survival rates. To anyone's surprise, including the survivors themselves. I sure as hell hope that this never, ever happens again in any country. Whatever Trump is plotting behind his, what he thinks he's safe behind his walls in the White House. It is called a White House, yes, I'm Australian. We have a Parliament House. I sure as hell hope that this never happens again to any country because nobody deserves to suffer like that. Nobody deserves to be caught up in someone else's demise, someone else's wars. Because I really like my candle. To all those young women who managed to find peace and happiness within Israel, wherever they finally wound up in the world, well past Auschwitz, Birkenau, Ambers, and Belgium. I hope that this, they find the light that they need. I mean, of course they have now gotten husbands, even if their husbands by now have passed away. They had discovered happiness that they were supposed to. It's like they hit the resume button on their own life once the war was completely over. Unfortunately for some, however, they still got stuck with night terrors, constantly reminded that they're no longer facing the wars, no longer facing such hell. It is an honest blessing that these people get to retell their story, educationally of course, to the younger generation, my parents' generation, my generation, my sister's generation, you know, to spread the word, which is completely ironic to say considering when I was on YouTube, it was only Heidi Summers videos that I came across talking about this. Every single other video is just interviews based off of these survivors alone. There aren't enough people clearly talking about it, which sucks because even over years, and not every country is aware of it, not spoken highly in each country. I was actually kicking myself a little bit when I didn't even know about this history. But I'm certainly hoping that these amazing, strong will survivors continue to seek the light and that their light grows brighter and brighter, chasing away all the demons that were ever in their life. I'm not saying that Germans are all assholes. Obviously they're not. There are some very, very sweet, beautiful Germans in the world. My mum has a German friend. We have a German extended family. Um, that's why my sister went up to Switzerland in the first place because my dad's cousin, so therefore my second cousin, his wife is Swiss German. So not all the way German, but it is technically her first spoken language. And my sister has been vaguely learning some German, so there are some amazing Germans in the world. Back then, they were very shunned upon, and I guess it does come down to the influence of their leader, which. Oh! So thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it and definitely learned a thing or two from it. And I shall see you all for my future videos. Bye bye!